Hi, my name is George Coles, and I am an avid retro video game collector. Do a barrel roll! I have decided to document my journeys as I grow my collection. Please join me as I share with you my finds. Welcome to Retro Game Treasure Hunting. Hi everybody and welcome to Retro Game Treasure Hunting. My name is George Coles and let's jump right into my finds. Now this time, we're going to focus on one system, the NES. In our first game, Baseball Stars. Take a look here. has a nice little gold, uh, you have a memory but. Uh, memory pack in here, which means it's got a battery backup. Um, a lot of people don't collect sports games, and I'm not one that does. I have a few, um, a lot for a sentimental value. This is one of those cases. Now, it kind of gets lost nowadays when we have Madden and FIFA and NBA 2K and MLB The Show coming out every year. But back in the day, Sports games were kind of hit and miss. You could get one and not have another one for two years, or there'd be five football games on the market, and you didn't know which one was the good one, which one was the bad one. You basically had to buy and try or rent it from your local video store, and yes, I'm that old that I've rented video games from video stores. But you would find gems like this, like baseball stars here. And... A lot of them weren't licensed, a lot of them had quasi-real players, like, the names were close enough that you could pick who they were, like, on this game specifically, the names of the players are close enough to historical players that you know who it's supposed to be. The thing I really like about this game, above other baseball games on the NES, and I like RBI Baseball a lot, too, um, there's... A whole lot of things in here that we would go on to see be commonplace in sporting games. A season mode, which a lot of games didn't have at the time. It was just basically you play your match and then that's it. Um, create a player mode. You could follow your career of your player. Team management where you could trade players. I liked it and I liked the fact that there was a little bit of strategy. Different teams played different ways. Like... Uh, the team from American, their American team, uh, plays with a lot of the American baseball legends. The Japanese team plays with a lot of the Japanese legends, and so on and so forth. And there's different things that the American team's more based on power, the Japanese team's based on speed. There's even a girl team in the game that plays kind of a softball type style. So it's kind of interesting how they did it. And I enjoyed it. I always had tons of fun with it. So I decided to pick it up again. Have fun as an adult with it. With that being said, let's jump into our ratings. Now, graphic-wise, I'm going to give this a 4. Uh, this is about as good as you're going to get for a sports title on the NES. There's some you could argue are a little bit better. Uh, R RBI Baseball 2, you could argue, is better. Uh, base is loaded, maybe, but it's still pretty good. Ooh. It just decided to attack itself. Uh, gameplay, like I said, there's a lot of interesting things that became standard and commonplace that were new to this game. I give the gameplay a 5. I think they were spot on with what they did. Uh, definitely made it a game that you could go on. And before I get too much further, if this is the first time watching one of these videos... I get grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale, 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. Um, but yeah, so gameplay-wise, there's a lot of fun, a lot of, to be had with this. Difficulty, I give it a 2. Now, when I grade difficulty, it's not how difficult the game is. It's the difficult level, the level of difficulty versus the level of enjoyment. There are some extremely difficult games, Castlevania series, for example, that I enjoy immensely. Uh, Bloodborne is a newer game that is difficult, but I enjoy it a lot. 
this I give it a 2 because you can pretty much master the game within the first day of having it. And that's not a pro I mean, that's not a huge problem because you're still going to be able to have fun with it. However, there isn't too much to it. It's baseball, so you can't really give it too much of a difficulty factor. Replay value, I give it a 4. Like I said, with the different modes, the different teams, the different styles, there's reasons to keep going back to it. The music in the game, I give it a 4. It's got pretty much what you would expect from a sports game music, kind of the old-timey baseball sounds to it. Um, overall, I give it a 4. I think this is definitely, if you're a fan of baseball, if you're not familiar with this game, I definitely say pick it up. Especially for the reason that you can have this pretty cheap. I think I paid $6.99 for it. And you're definitely going to get $6.99 worth of enjoyment out of it. Even if you're not a sports fan, I think you could still have fun with this. But, baseball stars. A kind of a hidden gem. Not a lot of people I see talking about this. Now next up is the 80s personified. And that is Yo Noid. Now if you're not familiar with the Noid, again, I am dating myself as being an old ass man. The Noid was a claymation character for Domino's Pizza. And in their commercials... They were trying to beat the Noid to get, deliver you fresh pizza, and the Noid was trying to stop them. Yeah, it was the 80s. It's exactly how it sounds. You should probably, after this video, go and check out some videos of the Noid. They're hilarious and campy and very 80s, and that's the reason why I picked up this game. Um, I never had this as a kid. I knew it existed. This was at a time when companies were throwing anything at the wall and trying to get video games out there. We've seen so many properties get licensed. Uh, Barbie had video games. This had some video games. Uh, I believe Sprite had one. Um, There's just everything. And anybody and anyone was trying to cash in on, the, on Nintendo and the uh, video game craze that it brought with it. And the to be perfectly honest, this isn't a bad game. I popped it in and played it, and I had a lot of fun with it. Which should probably bring us right into our ratings for it. Graphic-wise, I give it a 3. Um, for a side-scroller that it is, it's about on par with like what you would expect from the system. Gameplay, I give it a 3. There is some fun to be had. There's some weird stuff. Uh, when you fight a boss, you're not actually fighting a boss. You go into, like, a puzzle game where you're basically seeing who can eat the most pizza. It's kind of weird and interesting, but different. Um, definitely something that I've never seen in another game before or since. So there is some different elements to it. Your hardest parts about it and difficulty, I give it a 1, and this is the reason why. The hardest parts of this game is fighting the elements. The... Whether it be on the first level where you're on a level that's like a whole floating level. That if part of the level dips under the water and you're on that part or you're trying to jump to that part that's under the water, you'll die as soon as you touch water. So it's like the Noid is... I don't know, I guess uh, water is his kryptonite. So it's really weird and there, that's... It's more difficult than it should be. Um, I became very frustrated very fast with this, and not in a good way. Not in a way that I wanted to keep continuing on, but in a way that I wanted to smash my controller, which isn't always a good feeling. You don't want to feel that way. Uh, replay value, I give it a 2. I think this would be a fun game to bust out every once in a while. I can't see you playing it over and over and over again, but, you know, every now and again... Uh, the music in it's really good, pretty good. I give the music a 3, a lot better than it probably should be. Overall, I give the game a 3. Uh, for something that's an obvious cash grab, it's something that was put out 
for kids that like the Noid commercials, much like the California Raisins and all the other crazy stuff we got on the NES, to me, there is some sentimental value with it, and it was a game I never had but knew about, so I wanted to get it now. Overall, I'll give it a three. It's not a must-buy, but it's so cheap. You can get it for five bucks. Why not pick it up if you're interested or you just want something weird and wacky that you can pull out and say, Hey, you know the Domino's character, the Noid? He had his own game. <laughs> just crazy stuff like that. Last but not least, probably my favorite of the three, Star Tropics 2, Zora's Revenge, or Zoda's Revenge. I don't know why I said Zora there. But, as you see, it's another game that has the battery backup to it. Which I always thought was funny uh, that they used that, the gold. It kind of feels like they made tons of stickers for Zelda and just stuck them on everything else. But they're different, so I don't know why it's gold. Maybe to get, get your eye and let you know that. But anyway. What that tells me is I need to pop it open and replace the battery. This game... I I enjoy it. I enjoyed it the first time I played it. I kind of didn't really want to play it around the first time. I loved Star Tropics the first game, don't get me wrong. But that was already at 1990, kind of late into the the life of the Nintendo. This The Genesis, I think, came out a year later. Super Nintendo, two years later. So we were already in, high in the life cycle. Zoda's Revenge, or... Zoda's Revenge came out in 1994, when everybody had already moved on to the 16-bit world. And I think that's part of the reason why we don't have a Star Tropics 3, and Star Tropics didn't continue on. Because this game should have been programmed and made for the Super Nintendo. This should have been a Super Nintendo grade with, game with Super Nintendo graphics, Super Nintendo size they could add it to it. Not that this is a bad game in retrospect, but when you're playing games like Chrono Trigger or Secret of Mana or one of the Final Fantasy games that came out on the Super Nintendo and you go back to this, it just doesn't hold up. And it's a generation behind when it was being made, so... At the time, it kind of was panned because who's still making regular NES games? And there was tons of developers that were, and there were tons of people that weren't moving on. But to me, that kind of detracted to it. That's why, even back then, I didn't really want to play it. Because as a, as a kid, I mean, I was 13 or 14. I'd already moved on. The Nintendo was the kiddie system. The Genesis and the Super Nintendo were the systems of this generation that, when this was out. So, even then I didn't really want to play it. I played it a few years later, and it is a fun game, and we're going to get to that in a moment. But I think that's why Star Tropics is one of those series that probably deserve a reboot, but we'll never see. Who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe one day, I know that they were put on the virtual console, both of them. Maybe they'll put out a remaster of the two Star Tropics games, and the fan interest will drive us to get a third. Hopefully, we can all hope, at least all of us that do like the games. With that being said, let's jump into the ratings. Graphic-wise, I give it a three. The graphics are good for Nintendo. It would probably be a five if this game came out in 88. 87, 89. However, like I mentioned a minute ago, it came out in the era of the 16-bit games, so I can't really give a great graphic grade. It should have been made for Super Nintendo. It came out so late in the Nintendo NES's lifespan that a PAL version wasn't even made, and that's just weird and crazy. Uh, gameplay, I give it a 4. It is a very fun game to play. It is very much what you would expect from a Star Tropic sequel. Difficulty, I give it a 4. There's some puzzles, there's some role-playing elements. It is a, again, 
very enjoyable game, especially if you're not someone that has preconceived notions that it's a bad game, that it wasn't up to par. Replay value, I give it a 3. I don't think it's quite as good as the original Star Tropics, but it's still a really... It's a fun game. It's one that I'm going to play multiple times again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not something that I'm going to throw in my closet and never play again. I'll probably play this every couple of years. Which, I know doesn't sound like a lot, but I have, like, almost 200 video games. It's hard to get to all of them where you work a full-time job. Music-wise, the music is fantastic. I give the music a 4 on the game. And overall, I give the game a 4. It is my favorite of the three games I'm reviewing today. If you're not familiar, and wow, I just noticed that someone had their name wrote on that. I didn't even notice that. But oh well, it's very light. If you're not familiar with it, or you thought and just never went for it, I recommend getting it. I mean, again, it's another game that you could have, I think I paid $12, $14 for it, somewhere in that area. But all in all, some pretty decent finds. And that Noi game doesn't like to stand it up on its own. Baseball Stars, definitely a fun game, especially if you're a baseball fan, especially if you remember from the time. Recommend that. Yonoid, I recommend for the cheese value and the, I kind of want to say hipster value to it. I mean, I don't know what you would say, how you would consider that the quiche value, I guess. Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2. If you're going to get one of the three, that's the one to get. All three of them aren't bad purchases, I think. I think you would enjoy all three of them, especially with the price points. I mean, you could get all three of these for less than 20 bucks, so you could have fun with that. And I I, thir I like them all. I, I did, um, Yonoid is probably my least favorite of the three, but it's going to be one that I play through, that I'm going to go through. It's not so bad that I play a little bit of it, I'm just like, alright, this is stupid. I'm actually going to play through to the end of it. Baseball Stars, I'm going to have fun with. Probably going to have more fun when someone comes over that's around my age and remembers it and we put play against each other. Zoda's Revenge, like I said, I'm probably going to bust that out every couple of years and play it all the way through again and just have fun with it. But all in all, three decent games, two fours, two solid games, one three, one middle of the road. That It depends on how this game I'm willing to bet Depends on your nostalgia, how you feel about it. If you're nostalgic for the 80s, and you grew up in that time period, and you liked Annoyed, you'll like this. If you didn't, you're not going to. There's, I mean, that's just how it is. There's a lot of nostalgia that drives that game. But with all that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Retro Game Treasure Hunting.